Hello. So, if there's any questions that I haven't addressed, uh, please uh, let me know here. I'll go through the questions. How much rosin should I apply? That's a very good question. So, what I do is I take my rosin, I say 20 times here, 20 times here, 20 times here, 20 times here. So, I basically apply it on like five different parts. That's the tip, upper middle, middle, lower middle and low. Okay. So, I do this uh, say 20 times and then I, this is my own way, right? I don't know if that's the best way. I just run it here and I just check how much excess hair rosin is there on the bow. So, just the amount of uh, hair coming will let me know. If and usually the middle of the bow, right, tends to be less in rosin. So I put it again and I make sure it's uniform. Then I take a cloth and I wipe off all the excess rosin once or twice. You don't want to take the rosin off, you just want to take the powder off mm. so that this doesn't happen. You know, this has happened for me. It does happen, but at least you can limit it a bit. And also wipe the wood while you are at it. So that's uh, what I do for the rosin. And. Uh, Hello Venkoba, Venkoba is here, he is the guy who makes my Tulsi violin. Venkoba, I have been giving a lot of free promotion for your violin here, if you haven't noticed. Uh, so, Venkoba Shah is uh, the owner of Tulsi Violins, he makes this violin. You know, if you like this violin, DM me and I will give you uh, his number. And I hope Venkoba will give me a, a good uh, commission from that. I am joking. What should uh, beginners practice daily? Okay, so beginners, uh, as I said, I was just talking about practice. Um, let us say you have one hour, okay? So what you can do is uh, spend 30 minutes to 40 minutes on technique. Spend uh, 10 minutes to 20 minutes on repertoire, on a kirtana you want to play, on a varnam you want to play. Spend 10 minutes on improvisation, you know, if make, you go into your own room, no one's around, if you want, you just switch off your light and just play whatever comes to your mind. You know, no one's judging you, you're not judging yourself, you're just, you've done an incredible amount of work for 50 minutes and you're just letting yourself go. You know, that's very important and that's where our happiness comes from after practicing, right? So let me, I always draw this analogy between... Uh, driving a car, you know, and playing the violin because, you know, in the car, it's important that your your engine has to be uh, oiled, everything has to be tuned, everything has to be perfect. That's the technique part of it, right? Only when you have that, you'll be able to sit back, enjoy and drive and go as fast as you want to. So that's where technique comes. That's why I'm saying technique is boring, guys, but please do uh, at least half, if not 60, 70 percent of your time for technique. It is equally important to uh, spend time on repertoire. So do play your Varnams, do play your Kirtanas, which are an expression of your techniques. And it's very important to have your improvisation. In Carnatic music, you know, I'm not talking about improvisation much because that's all Carnatic uh, music addresses. Manodharma, how to do this, that. I am talking about the things that you guys, and I'm assuming most of you are Carnatic musicians, will not possibly get. You know, uh, I'm not trying to say that uh, the gurus don't have in mind, but I'm, all I'm trying to say is, as a Carnatic musician who has gone into the Western, you know, the, the second I got into Western techniques, my sound improved. You know, I was, I consider myself very average when I was playing Carnatic. I had a lot of problems. I had a lot of scratchiness and I was, um, you know, not very confident. Western technique, you know, combination of western technique and uh, manodharma in the Carnatic, you know that's a very powerful combination you know you look like violinists like uh, el subramaniam uh, el shankar ganesh kumares you know these people have had uh, uh, a lot of western technique influence especially for the bowing arm the western technique is amazing it's very very important okay I, I tend to give long answers uh, to all questions, so I, I'm always catching up with comments. Beginners practice daily. Okay, guys, let me tell you a very, very important bowing practice that you guys should all do. Okay, I'm going to set my metronome to 60 BPM. Okay. Hang on. 
again i repeat myself uh, it's important to keep your uh, tempo and shruti while you practice you know never practice without your tempo so there you see that's my uh, metronome and that's uh, my tanpura okay so this is called the son file s o n space f i l e okay this is called the son file so what you're going to do is to keep let me go this way you're going to keep your bow as close to the bridge as possible not above the bridge but as close to the bridge as possible and you're going to draw the bow as slowly as possible okay as slowly meaning aim to get 20 or 30 seconds for one bow it's going to sound a bit scratchy you're not looking to get a good sound you're not looking to get a perfect sound what is happening in this exercise i will tell you after i do it for a little bit so it's like this keep your hands correct position make sure you get that that's very important relaxed okay so this slow and even slower uh make sure your violin has a good amount of rosin on it that will help so go all the way down to this end and then go back up you know the violin sound can be scratchy it can disappear in places but aim to get at least 60 to 70% of um uh, the violin tone you know i had a student who said he did it for 60 70 seconds you know i can i can do it for 40 seconds he said 60 70 i said wow what are you doing so basically he was he was so slow that there was no sound that was coming out so that is not good aim to get at least 70% of sound uh, to begin with and you can increase it try and get 20 seconds uh, i am on 60 bpm 60 bpm 60 beats per minute that's basically one uh, beat every second you can get an app as i said i use pro metronome but get a metronome app on your android or iphone you will get it and you can get a tanpura app on your phone you don't need a computer for these guys or you have everything you have a tuner as well on your uh, on your uh, phone so you can use that to tune your violin as well there's a lot of questions about tuning uh, i'll get to that once i go through the comments 60 bpm go all the way down up if you're doing it's it's sort of like a gym if you're doing 20 seconds the first day try and aim at 22 seconds then try and aim at 20 uh 4 25 you know increase it to 30 so do it on all four strings okay all the way i have five strings if you have five strings do it for five but do it for four strings and what this will do is uh, remember i told you about practice when you exaggerate and make it slowly everything understands so what it happens and again i keep getting back to the fingers and the muscle memory at each point of time in the bow it tells you how each of your fingers are feeling and when you do all the awareness exercises that i did and i've i've shared the insta live to my story so you can check it out so when you look at um, all the awareness exercises and come to sun fire you know with your bow uh, with your thumb being flexible with your little finger being curved and uh, you know everything happening that it should you do the sun file that sort of glues everything together in your muscles you mean you know what i'm saying so do it as slowly as possible so each finger understands what they are uh, how they are feeling at different points of time in a bow okay and you're doing it so slow and you're keeping your fingers very relaxed okay doing it the right way so once you do this this exercise will have a magic effect on your tone you know you just go google sun file and you uh, people will tell you it's one of the most important exercises on google so do it like this and uh, i can guarantee you within a week if you do it right uh, definitely within two weeks you will see your bow tone improve you know the awareness exp uh, awareness exercises i said about thumb flexibility little finger all those things as well as the sun file sun file do it every day please do the sun file every day that's very very important that's sort of me trying to answer sudha violence question um 
I learned from Shri V Tyagarajan. Answer to Supriya. I learned from Shri V Tyagarajan. He's no more. He's my primary guru. I learned ten, eleven years from him. Then I went to Rukmini Mami, T Rukmini Mami. I learned from her for a year and a half. Then I went to Narasimhan Sir, V S Narasimhan Sir, a Western violinist for some Western uh, lessons as well. So these are these are my gurus whom uh, I've been fortunate to learn under. Rupesh, sir, can you suggest me a good processor? You know, entry level. I think Zoom makes some good processors. Check a Zoom processor. You know, buy whatever you want. See the ratings. See the reviews on Amazon. Uh, you or Sweetwater. Sweetwater. You can't buy it from unless you are getting it from the US. But you know, you'll be seeing the reviews there, and you'll be able to see what is good, what is not good. Zoom makes some good processor. I think Boss makes some good processor. If you're starting out, buy a basic processor. Make sure it has EQ. Make sure it has uh, delay. Make sure it has reverb. These three things are the main thing. If it has distortion, chorus, and all that, yeah, okay, fine. I I used to go crazy over all these things, but uh, now the only other effect that I use is an octaver, right? Uh, which I really use a lot. I don't use the other excess, uh, other ones too much. But yeah, if you're into it, get a multi FX processor. Uh, EQ, reverb, delay, very important, guys. Um, how do you start feeling comfortable resting your violin standing up this is a very important question and uh, i can't claim that i know the 100% uh, answer to it from the way in terms of how i play but you get uh, your shoulder rest you know get a good shoulder rest that comes here and first rest your violin on the collarbone and i would uh, like you to supplement my answer with a lot of answers you'll have online as well So basically, it rests on the collarbone, and then the rest takes care of the thing. And you have to drop your chin straight down, a little bit to the left, but not too much. Okay. And the violin is sort of the violin is not like this. The violin is sort of at a forty-five degree angle, right? So this is zero. This is ninety. Uh, so let me. I'm I'm perpendicular on the phone. So this is forty-five, right? Like this is ninety towards you, and this is zero. So at a forty-five degree angle, and uh, make sure you're not putting weight down. Make sure there is no pressure here. That's very important, or else you will start to have uh, issues with the neck. I've gone through <laughs> my share of problems with uh, you know uh, wrong posture. It's an occupational hazard, but I hope you guys don't get it. so any pain that you get please stop you're doing something wrong the violin is uh, the balance of getting a violin right especially on the western hold is very intricate a uh, lot of people suffer from neck problems you got to get the right shoulder rest try different shoulder rest i use the wolf uh, secondo i think wolf secondo shoulder rest make sure you get the right chin rest you know um, try a few this is over this chin rest is over uh, this the center you know and there are some chin rests that come that comes towards more towards here so depending on how you know how tall you are where your neck is and all those things you know make sure that when you keep it at 45 degrees and when you put it down you are able to balance the violin by itself with a shoulder rest i don't have a shoulder rest so it's tough for me to do it but with a shoulder rest it gets easy uh but this is a constant uh, thing that you have to do check it make sure you don't have pain if you have pain chain something you know buy a few shoulder rests buy a few chin rests it's a, it's a little expensive but i would definitely recommend you trying at least two and going with something that's more comfortable and if you have pain please change something you know either your posture or the shoulder rest or the chin rest and uh, mostly it's your posture mostly it's 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 you doing this or it's do you doing this neither of this should happen you know your shoulder should be relaxed you know should be relaxed and this shouldn't happen guys okay even if you're playing sitting down and this shouldn't happen where you're pushing down on the weight of the violin in general i would say i've seen narasimhan sir playing carnatic on the western hold but i feel like um it takes a lot of effort to do that because when you do your gamakas you put a lot of pressure you know as carnatic violin is keeping our uh, thing on the leg there you know we are used to putting a bit of pressure and we can afford to you know because that's the way we play it we should we should keep it as light as possible as a general rule 
but to play gamakas and play a kritik on the kriti on the western hold i don't usually do it i play nagumomu because it's like an energetic song i play that while standing up so that it looks good uh but raghuvam sasuda or manavyala kem you know i just sit down and i play you know but any film songs all that i play while standing up it's fine but when it's too much intricate gamakas and all that i feel like i sit and play i'll enjoy myself better and and if i enjoy myself i the audience probably enjoys it better as well uh yes i practice uh, oh so that's a very good question hk while uh, practicing shevichik i sometimes keep it on sapa but sometimes i move to the western tuning so for lot of these practices on shevichik western tuning is uh, e a d g that is sa in monushudi uh, uh sa in uh, arushudi a sa in rendushudi and sa in anjushudi if uh, if you guys are not conversant with the western notation e a d g uh, if you don't know western notation you won't be able to check sevichik so probably that doesn't apply to you um e a d g is the western tuning and uh, sometimes for a lot of the things there you have to use the western tuning so yes that's a very very good question move to the western tuning and do sevichik unless it's a bowing thing or if it doesn't matter or if you're just talking about something within one string you can get away with it you know <sighs> okay okay again i'm lagging behind let me go down 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 does the instrument age like wine yes it does uh, acoustic violins age like wine while electric violins probably just stay the same um what made me change my violin um at one point of time um i i i acoustic violin i feel like um I don't want to get sentimental but you know getting a good acoustic violin is like a blessing you know I've searched for four or five years to get a good acoustic violin and uh, suddenly a friend of mine Mishko bassist he said hey I know someone in France who has uh, who's a who knows me he knows uh, some old lady who has a violin in her uh, attic you know old grandmother kind of a person who has a violin in the attic and how do and are you interested so i went i uh, my very good friend hemant sir who's a who's a violinist he plays for a lot of string sections uh, here in the film industry so i took him i went and saw the violin the violin was very old but you know he looked at it i don't i'm a violin player but i am not a violin maker so i needed his guidance so he told me get this violin it was a bit broken so i got it for half the price and i he sorted it out for me i'm very very grateful to him he's you know he's a guy who introduced me to sevichek and a lot of the things you know i mean he's an amazing person so i bought it and uh, it's a 1860 violin you know it's a grand jean pair it's a, a f- uh, french violin and uh, it sounds amazing it's an acoustic violin and um, i mean i feel like that's a very very important acquisition i'm glad i feel blessed as i said to have it as far as uh, electric violin goes you know go with the tone in your mind my yamaha got really old and i felt like i wanted a change so i went to my tulsi i already had a tulsi to begin with then i went to my yamaha then again i came back to the tulsi and uh, by the time mankoba had done some changes in it to make it sound a bit more warmer and stuff like that i liked it and you know i thought look i don't want a sound uh, i don't want the synthetic sound and some of the violins are very grainy and very you know i don't like the violins uh, that are too fat and synthetic so i came back to the tulsi um and that's yeah that's basically that's basically the tone made me change karnatic train violinist basic tips on how to switch to standing and playing get a shoulder rest uh, get a as i've already explained get a shoulder rest and see some videos you know it's important to see some videos and make sure there's no pain while playing it it's a slow process guys if you want to stand and play it's a slow process don't expect results immediately over a couple of months this uh, lockdown during coronavirus is possibly the best time for you to do it switch start to play slowly start to play a basic stuff don't start with the kirtanas please maybe start with some things that don't uh, require too many gamakas right you play a varnam without the gamaka right uh, because it's tough to play gamakas and slides while standing immediately it takes a lot of effort 
Also remember, if you feel pressure here, it also probably means you're putting too much pressure here. So lighten your fingers, you know, while you're playing. This is this is a typewriter, guys. Typewriter, you know, that's your that's what your fingers are doing. You know, there is a vibrato, there is a slide, and all that. But basically, make sure this is as light as possible. Okay, let me move on quickly. As a beginner, what to look in a violinist during a concert? Do you mean uh, what to look in a violinist during a concert? Um, you mean when you're watching a concert and a violinist who's playing, I would say look at uh, his or her bowing, see how they're bowing it and uh, see how far they go with their bowing and see their fingering to an extent possible. It's easy to look at the bowing depending on where you're sitting, but uh, also check out their uh, dynamics, you know, how they go f um, loud, how they go soft, you know, how they do that. Um, as a uh, Carnatic violinist, see how they build their ragas, how they build their uh, swaras, etc. Um, Gamaka practice lesson to practice daily. I'm not sure actually. You know, this is something that I really need to look into a bit deeply. You know, I have a lot of the slide uh, lessons that I do. I don't know if it's useful for you guys. But I had a Western classical violinist whom I thought. And uh, I'm teaching him the slide now, you know, um, it's very interesting uh, because I don't know how I learned the slide when I was young, but uh, it's very interesting because it's it involves a lot of things. So there is the two finger slide. So you start with this finger, end with this finger, okay? And there is uh, the three finger slide, which is starting with this finger, ending with this. Okay, then there is a four, three finger slide. Did I say three? I, I meant this is a two finger slide, what I just did now. Three finger slide, which starts here and ends here. For me, this is the basic building block of a gamaka, right? Any gamaka that comes will uh, use uh, these slides. I need to I need to see how I can convert uh, better playing how to play gamakas practice I need to convert that into some steps where you know like how I said for the bowing I need to figure that out I will definitely think about it it's it's good that you asked me a lot of these things as violinists we do na naturally we probably learnt it years ago uh, so I need to deconstruct it you know and I need to figure out how it's done and probably with my student also I learn, you know, I learn so much when I'm teaching because it tells me how things are done, you know, and I find myself improving in certain things as well. Um, facing difficulty, paying upper sa, gamma. Okay, so that's basically your position that's very important. Guys, you know, I would say one thing. If you're having trouble playing uh, either in the upper reaches or in the lower reaches, Please play with plain notes first, okay? Playing with plain notes is very, very important. Take your Geetams or take your Sarali Varsai or take your Varnams. You know, uh, there is absolutely no, uh, uh, nothing wrong in taking your Sarali Varsais and doing them again, your Janta Varsais or especially your Tatu Varsai, I think. There's da -da 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 something that goes like that, no? Uh, these are all very good exercises. And these are very important. If you use your Sevichik and if, if you can't do your Sevichik, Shradrik and uh, all those things, you know, go for the Sarali Versailles. You know, if you if you feel like, hey, I can't learn Western notation and I can't do all that, go to your Sarali Versailles, Tatu Versailles, do it in different ragas, do it with uh, plain notes. It's very important that you do it with uh, plain notes. <laughs> Basically, when you do it with plain notes, you are really sure of where your finger should be and that helps you. And to answer your question, upper, sa, ga, ma is also the same thing. You need to learn something called the third position in the Western violin that makes it much easier. But even without that, because 
I I still haven't gotten that perfectly because I learned something else and I am sort of in the middle here and there. It's very important to play, try and play plain notes, try and play plain notes with your varnams, you know, because varnam has this apa sa gama and stuff like that. So when you play your plain notes, you will get a good idea of where your finger has to be. Along with some Western lessons, it makes it much easier as well. Okay, Nagumomu. Okay, I'll play Nagumomu at the end of the session. Uh, best acoustic violin, you know, beginners, uh, Indian violin. There are Korean violin, Chinese violins in the market, which are, um, which are decent, you know, not bad. Then we have the some of the German violins at uh, which was at eight thousand when I saw it, but probably a little bit more. Um, the best acoustic violin is you have to source it. You have to find out who have it, has it. Go ask these stores. You know, I'm not too sure. Once I found my violin, I never really looked around. I unfortunately I don't think there is a place where you can find a good violin. Look, I'm planning to sell one of my old violins, which I hardly use. It's a German violin. You know, uh, DME. Uh, once the lockdown finishes, come play the violin, and if you're interested, you know. You can buy it from me, but to answer your question, you'll have to figure out uh, other dealers. Or if you're traveling, you know it's possibly good to go out and buy it. Just be careful while you buy an acoustic violin, in the sense that you know some people try and over. Uh, you know it's very tough to judge an acoustic violin. I myself, not too sure of that. You know, so basically play it, see how it sounds, see if it sounds good to you. If you have a good feeling while you're doing it, and. Uh, check what brand it is you know there might be some people who might say hey this violin is uh, this brand that brand you know i you have to be careful while you buy a violin because the value is very subjective what bow do you use do you think it's a good bow the right weight makes a difference yes sudha sudha sudarshan yes definitely i use the koda jewel okay it's an amazing bow uh, it's very expensive though this is uh, made of uh, carbon carbon fiber and uh, it's important that you have a bow that has a good balance because you can you can do these things very easily so definitely a good bow uh, helps this bow is specifically for electric violin because when i play the fifth string it's uh, my bow needs to be a bit heavy so that's what it is so get a few bowing exercises awareness in once you do that, when you're aware of how your position has to be there, when you go to a shop, you can hold a bow and you can do this and you, you will know how it's balancing, you know. Uh, so that matters. And that matters especially when you're, you're doing jumping things or when you're doing staccato or you're doing different things. But I would say, you know, rather than looking to buy a new bow, changing your bowing, uh, the way you bow, uh, and I have no idea how you bow or not. I'm just saying this as a general thing is very important that will change the tone it's more important than getting a, you could have the best bow but if you don't have good technique uh, or if you do not have uh, optimum technique you know you can always get better right at the sounding so work on the technique it's very difficult for me to change the tuning of my violin every song when playing in the band please so this is uh, is a tough thing for me as well uh, thankfully for uh, my band uh, you know we have two shrutis we have c sharp f sharp so i have two violins you know i have two violins i've started playing f sharp in c sharp so that i can move uh, my uh, second violin to a different thing which gives me option to play for three or four shrutis carry two violins carry a tuner with you uh, between songs, have the set list with you. These are all certain practical things. Have the set list with you. Try and get your friends, the musicians to, you know, group all your songs together which are in the same Shruti so you don't have to keep going back and forth. Have a bypass pedal on your tuner. Press the bypass, tune it very quickly in between the song and then you are ready, you know. So these are the things that I did when I played with uh, Raghu or Emergence. I used to keep doing this all the time. It's not easy. What you can do is to learn to play the song in, uh, if you want to play an E song in D, see how you can play it. It involves you learning positions. It involves you uh, doing some exercises for that. If it's a simple enough song where you have just one hook to do, 
I think it's easier to learn. But if you have to play a, a 32 bar solo where you have to improvise and do fancy stuff, you know, obviously you want to be on an E song, you want to be on an E violin, in which case you've got to tune it. I've seen a lot of violinists who use their processors and uh, pitch it up and down. You need to have a very good processor so that it doesn't sound bad, but try it out if you have a processor. Uh, and um, that works. It's not best, but it works. One or two semitones, you could do that. Vocal processor, guitar guitar processor is the one for the violin, not the vocal processor. Um, I'm not used to vocal processor the violin, so I don't know the answer for that, but I use, I've used guitar processors. I started with the Boss GT6, which was uh, really good, uh, and then now I have the Fractal FX8, which is top of the line, one of the best processors. The GT6 was amazing. You know, I played, uh, when I was playing with Raghu Dixit Project and all that, I used the GT6. It gave me great sounds, you know. I really love it. I don't think there's something such as a violin processor because I, I don't know why. There's they, enough violinists doing this, but I guess everyone goes to a guitar processor. The only thing is you can't use their presets because all the presets are aimed at guitar. So you have to create your own presets. To play Kalpana Swaras, how to create patterns, getting it right with the Thalam. If you get it right, then can you apply it to the Radha Ragam Spro? Okay, let me... Uh, I have two interesting steps for uh, Kalpana Swaram. Let me just play that. Guys, I'm going to keep going on for a bit until I see the numbers drop. It's already been an hour and a half. Maybe let's cap it at 10 o'clock. You know, I don't want to strain myself too much as well. Let's cap it at 10. And, you know, if you guys want one more live, please write to me. Also, to let you know, I'm planning a crash course uh, during the lockdown. I'm just thinking about it and I'm planning it. What techniques would you like to learn? Would you be interested? Just DM me or add to the comments of this post, Insta Live post. Um, so, yeah, just, just keep giving me some feedback. This is the first time I'm doing it. I know that in Insta Live, I can't cover too many things. So, which is why I'm looking at this crash course as a way in which I can see you playing. I see a lot of you guys giving video requests. I haven't been able to take it up because I'm like, there's too many questions there. So I'm trying to address that. So keep giving me feedback, what was useful, you know, so that I also know how I can do this uh, better on this medium, which is pretty new to me. So, Swaram, I have some notes here, which I wrote down and I'm going to refer to them. Okay, so first things for Swaram, have, as usual, have your metronome on, have your tanpura on, go to a tempo that you want to, let me say I want to do 90 BPM. I'll go to something lower so I can play the second speed. Okay, so I'm on 74 BPM. So this probably applies to uh, you guys who want to start playing the Kalpana Swaram Mava, just started. You know, if you already know how to play it, maybe you can start at a different level. But I would say start with uh, having this tempo, have five swaras, pick a raga, let's pick Sankara Varunam, have five swaras, okay? Five swaras. So, what and all can you do in the five swaras is what uh, is important. Say. I'll play it with Gamaka. So that's very basic. Just explore yourself in the last 10 minutes of your practice where I ask you to, you know, switch off your lights and just play what you feel like uh, alone in your room if you want to. Try this out. Okay, so there are various levels to it, right? First level, you take five swarams. So, 
that's the basic way of doing it. Then you could do um, another thing. Keep the five swarams. I think it's important. Okay. Now try to look at gaps that you can play. Um, So when you start to use gaps, automatically you're starting to get into a zone where, uh, you know, see, what's what's the idea of uh, Swaram and what is the success of Swaram? Swaram is uh, exploring the Raga in a rhythmic fashion because if you're not going to do it in a rhythmic fashion, it's Alapana. So you want to do it uh, in a rhythmic fashion, you want to explore a raga, you want to bring out the beauty of the raga. And I would say it is to make it memorable. You know, how can you make it in such a way that, you know, uh, it's memorable in, in the sense that how can you make it that it has a melody to it, you know? For example, <laughs> That's sort of like a that's sort of like a varnam, right? Now, if I want to add a certain sense of melody and a certain sense of movement to it, let me do one thing. I will start with ga. I will go down to re. I'll go to sa, and then I'll go to pa. Okay. So basically, I'm using different different landing notes. Okay. And uh, this probably answers Ram Viru's question about how to create patterns and getting it right to the getting it right to the talam. That's a slightly different topic, but um, uh, I'll address that separately. But this is about ga, re, sa, and pa. And see all the spaces that I'm using. You know, it's a mixture of uh, spaces and how can you create that together with the swaras. And uh, have uh, have landing notes like this. Uh, landing notes like this helps. Uh, da, da is a landing note. I've moved away from the five notes to the full thing. Right there, there is a pattern, you know. Again, coming back to landing node. I'm trying to move from da to knee. So I'm telling 
the audience that hey i'm going to knee you know and knee is uh, a very volatile note it's a uh, how to say you can't stand on it you can't do this knee always wants to resolve to sa so use it use it to you know give a feeling of resolution to the audience you know you see how knee is unstable I saw I saw uh, one of these master classes by uh, Hans Zimmer, and um, he was talking about how to make background music. You know, you know Hans Zimmer, right? He's done uh, for all the Dark Knight and uh, one of the biggest composers in uh, in Hollywood. So he was talking about question and answer, and I think it's very nice. to approach uh, the swaras through a very question answer sort of a thing where you know you have your stable notes for every raga so shankara varnam what's the stable note sa and pa if the raga has pa in shankara varnam obviously sa and pa are always stable okay gandharam is very stable uh madhyamam is a bit stable i would say it's not as stable as gandharam but sagapa is like rock solid madhyamam yes uh daivadam is not so stable you know madhyamam daivadam are little less stable ni is extremely uh less stable you know you can't stand on ni too much time because it causes a uh, it causes a uh, tension which is good you know you can use the tension uh ri again is uh, less stable because you know it doesn't give a feeling of uh, resolution i'm taking off the metronome for a while you know the feeling that you get it's it's there you know uh it's just sitting like a rock same with pa again and gandharam again it's rock solid but the second you get into your re you know see it it's it's uh, it's waiting to go into the the more uh, solid note you know what i mean same with ma you see how ma is a bit a bit here you know it's it's a, it's it's not as solid as ga is you know and look at da and when you get to pa you're like okay that's resolution you know so this is what we use uh, to sort of create emotions now coming back to what hans zimmer said i would say if you apply the whole question and answer to swaras it's very interesting so let's say the answers are always give us peace so that's the sa ga pa notes which resolve okay let's say the questions are the re's the ma's and the da's and the ni's so let's ask a few questions and let's answer it okay i'm going to go from ni to sa that's like a question you know if you're going to ask a question to someone hey what's happening you know you have to not take this literally but uh, that's a question that's a question that's an answer you know question is hey how are you doing and the answer is i'm doing well you know sankara varnam is about uh, happiness about being peace at peace with oneself according to me i don't know what the it's a rakti raga so that's what you need to use you know you are uh, basically a you are expressing yourself to your audience and uh, b you 
you are creating emotions in the people who are uh, uh, listening as well let's do uh, with uh, re and sa you know questions so question is the answer so you know these are interesting ways again there is no hard and fast rule but you know when you are trying to do something creative you need to play all these things in your mind and then come up with something uh, to wrap up this thing on swaram i think i've taken too much time uh, is uh, that uh, record yourself uh, while you are playing the swaram because you know you tend to lose focus uh, you you're trying to get the notes out so you don't uh, can't judge yourself on how you are sounding so record your uh, swarams and uh, listen to them later there will be things that you like there will be things that you don't like so you know what is good what is not good because we are our best judges and uh, just as you listen to a concert and you say hey i like this artist hey i don't like this artist do the same to yourself and that will start to create a feedback mechanism swarams anything that you play even if you're playing a kirtana record yourself listen to yourself inevitably you won't be happy with what you played and that's good because you will try and improve on it next also play records uh, of um, big uh, artists artists you like you know for me the trio of uh, tnk tn krishnan sir msg and lalgudi sir my go to violinist they all have different styles you might like one more than the other so please uh, check their swara types of playing and see if you can uh, take a swara and try and emulate it by i don't want you to buy heart it but i would like you to emulate it by 70 80% right and see what they've done you know for example uh, msg is famous for his swaras in sindhu bhairavi um, of course sindhu bhairavi might be a bit complicated but you did, uh, that helped me a lot when i was playing and i wanted to learn so get these artists listen to them listen to their stuff and then figure out uh, how you can uh, play uh, swarams like that there'll be things you know it's about listening a lot uh, and uh, you know imitating someone's creativity and when you do enough of it uh, you can start to get your own style it's nothing wrong uh, to imitate someone and then for you to take off from there because all the time uh, it's imitating someone is like sending a signal to your brain about how you're playing everything but then after a point of time when you want to be creative in the last 10 minutes of your practice you know when you switch every all the lights off and you're just one with you and the instrument you know your brain starts to give give you a lot of things and it picks things that you listen to is msg uh, violin uh, swaram you picked up from the tnk you picked up from or the semangudi uh, swaram that you picked up from so all these things really help um, so yeah that's it uh, as far as swaram is concerned okay let me quickly go guys gamaka i'll get back to you with something a bit more very precise uh, um, i need to sort of reverse engineer it playing violin in standing position yeah i've already answered about standing so i guess you heard it technique on playing upper sa gama is uh, basically you got to use your position you got to use your positions and you got to play it i would say that uh, when you get to your sa use your first finger and then re second finger ga third finger and uh, ma if possible the little finger same for sa ri ga ma pa da also right these are um, important to get but again it comes from a wholly structured learning of how to do it we will look at addressing that in a separate way um manodharma swaram sai just answered that um hemant nayar learned western and carnatic music how many months i don't know if that's a question how many months are you getting over how many months i get asked this a lot how many months or years i think it will take years for sure definitely not months 
it depends on how much time you put into it i would say if you put a lot of time effort, effort and motivation i think uh, uh i don't know guys i think it'll take probably 3 years uh, sorry what am i saying it'll take 3 years for you to get to the basic level then another 2 3 years for the intermediate and then possibly uh, by the 6th year i think you can you can do something uh, as a professional it's a very tough question to answer all i can say is um, it's uh, the, the, the how fast you do is uh, directly proportional to the amount of time you spend you know a guy who spends or a, or a girl who spends 4 hours every day on a violin is going to finish something in a year that a person who spends only 1 hour in a day uh, is going to take probably 4 years you know and uh, it's it's just like that it's just the amount of time you do a lot of my students say hey how can i come i can i have regular classes i want to meet uh different uh, students at different levels have different needs but i always tell them one thing it's not important what we do here at class but what you go back home and practice so practice 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 that's the most important thing you know um i feel like violinists in general are very calm people uh, it takes a lot of patience it takes a lot of tolerance it takes a lot of uh, you know being one with yourself to be a good violinist because you know you just spend hours on practice you know and you end up liking it because it's very meditative um so yeah it's no easy answer to your question which exercise to make gamaka perfect uh, western people they have no gamaka so how can play gamaka any simple exercise okay so now when you say for a western violinist i think that makes it simpler simpler for me to explain to you how to do this um uh, let me go a bit back okay so so in western classical we have so we have this right guys i have 10 minutes i think i'll wrap up in 10 minutes yeah i'll do the slide maybe that's possibly it uh i for the guys who wanted to know how to tune stuff let me address it in a separate live or i'll try and do a video right um slide so slide is what slide is basically uh changing from one finger to the other in most cases we can do a one finger slide as well changing from one finger to the other without uh, a change in the tone <laughs> unless you look at me you don't know it's changed from one finger to the other what is the wrong way of doing it that's the wrong way of doing a slide because you you see that break you know it's not this it's this break so source finger target finger okay so what happens is at some point of time um so it's basically like forget uh, a whole tone let's go for a semitone from re to small ga so you slowly drop the middle finger so try and get get this graph you know it should be this it should not be this there should be no break in that so try with two fingers I I have a lot of very interesting ways to get the slide for western classical violinists I can't address everything here but start with this you know It's basically how slowly you drop the middle finger and for ga and ma You know that's the start that's the start it's a very complicated question uh it's a very good question that's the start so there's a lot of things that you have to do on top of that uh let's see how we can work that out there is two finger slides there is three finger slides there is one finger slide there is four finger uh no one two three there is four finger slide as well so we'll have to figure that out um uh, yeah i'll address gamakas which exercise can make gamaka perfect yeah that's what i, I just answered um i already uh, spoken about gamakas gamakas i'll come back with something very specific 
studying Carnatic violin for the past 14 years, but when I'm playing cinematic songs, every song I'm getting Carnatic, I have no, I have to change that. Please give suggestion. It's a very common problem for us Carnatic violinists. Uh, you know, <laughs> when I used to just start playing, uh, you know, my Western uh, musician counterparts used to make fun of me. It's very true. So, um, start practicing your varnams and all that on um, plain notes. <laughs> This is very important because in Carnatic everything is a slide, everything is a gamaka, but in film songs it's not the way. So first get that, you know, and the Varnams will probably sound bad, but doesn't matter, it's just for your practice. Get that sorted, you will automatically see a big change. Then you might have to develop the vibrato and stuff like that. That's a, again a different, but this is the first suggestion that I would give. To you're not going to forget your Carnatic style, but you will probably know how to play without the Carnatic style as well. And when you're doing the plain notes, be very, very careful about your intonation. Intonation meaning staying in Shruti. Please be very careful about it because with Gamaka, sometimes some people are used to being in Shruti, but when you go to the plain notes, it's tough. The Shraddik exercises I've suggested in the last live, that's the one hour before, the Sevichik, all this helps, you know. Again, I will post this because guys, I can't insist on this enough. Sevichik uh, Shradrik Very good, very good stuff these are all So uh, uh, I'm coming to an end of uh, This live, I'm just going to play a song And I'm going to stop, okay Let's play Raghuvam Sasada <laughs> guys thanks a lot for being here uh, had a great time and it's two hours on the clock i didn't see time going uh, do give me feedback let me know how you liked it i will read all your comments a little bit more i'm sorry if i haven't seen your comment or i haven't been able to address a question that you had i will definitely do more uh, live uh, sessions like these and um, as i said i want to do a crash course uh, where i'll be able to handle uh, a small group of violinists and uh, grouped into like similar categories and address, see them playing and address like sort of a Zoom sort of a class. Let me know if you'd be interested in it and let me know what kind of techniques and stuff like that. Just keep giving me feedback. It's very useful for me. Let's see what uh, best we can do out of this whole uh, Corona lockdown. Uh, I don't know how the situation outside is going to be. The next two weeks are very crucial. Uh, if it doesn't get said enough, please stay safe. Don't go out. I have a feeling it's going to get worse. I hope I'm wrong, but please stay indoors. Don't go out, not for yourself, but for the elders in your house. Be very careful, and uh, I will see you all guys very soon. I have 12, 10 seconds remaining, so I have to sign off. And uh, we'll all meet, uh, hopefully, another live session very soon. Thank you all. Take care.